You want me to sit there while you... Welcome to our Sunday service that we be here today speaking a little bit about things that bother us, things that hinder our walk, a little bit about who we are in Christ and how we can better ourselves for Christ. I think it's very important that we, we look towards what God has for us and all that we can accomplish through His name. My text is going to be out of 7, Romans 7. I want to start in I want to start in verse 9. It is important that we understand and Paul deals with this a lot and it's uh, in in Romans it talks about uh, the law of the law of sin that controls our our very being because we the Proverbs tells us that we're born into trouble. The day we're born, we we continue in that trouble and we last in it for our lifetime. And as we continue to grow and we find Jesus Christ in our life, then we, we prosper towards that. But the old man begins to die or that old man is stays with us. I think it's very important that we deal with that subject a little bit this morning because we we deal a lot with self self is always a, a person that always wants to come and hinder who we are and, and what we are and how we understand what Jesus Christ is Paul dealt with that a lot in his ministry because he fought the carnal man that was within him that warred against him and we all know we have that same warring and uh, the scripture tells us that we we are our, our warfare are not carnal but spiritual in the pulling down of strongholds so we we try to understand that and see that in the fullness but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read in Romans 7 it says for I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin received and I died and the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion, the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Question mark. God forbid. But sin, that in might appear sin, working death in me by which is good that sin by commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin for that which I do I allow not for what I would that do I I not but what I hate that do I if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that is good. Now then is no more that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Paul, he's a very good double talker, but if you understand his writings, he will always come to that point. And his point is that I gave my heart to the Lord. I live in the righteousness of who Jesus Christ is, but sin still exists in us. And the, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, if you, you say you have not sinned and you don't sin, then you're probably a liar because all have sinned. It is committed to us. And even though he went to Calvary and gave us that righteousness and that justification, still that is talking about the spirituality of who we are and how we deal with that through the existence of this body here. And once we, we start into the reality of what Jesus Christ is to us, then we understand the fullness of what Paul is talking about. He's talking about he is, he is sold under sin, 
but he's redeemed by the commandment of God through Jesus Christ on Calvary. So with it, we, we deal with that, but I, I want you to look at what, what he said here that is very important. So I'm, we can, it's kind of going to be a Bible study, but not a Bible study. For ten, the, the sin taketh occasion by commandment, deceiveth me by a slew me. Sin will always, and what Paul is talking about, sin will kill you because sin is an enemy to God. God cannot look upon sin. If you remember when Jesus was on Calvary and he took the sins of the whole world and at that moment God turned his back to him. At that moment because he couldn't, God can't face sin. Sin can't be affiliated with God so he turned his back on Jesus at that moment. But that was his son. That was his duty. That's what he came here to do, is to take away our sins, give us the righteousness of who God is through his son, Jesus Christ, as he works through us. So, Paul deals with that very, very eloquently, I guess, because he, he talks about it. He says, even though I am a righteous man, sold under sin and to the commandment, of righteousness towards Jesus Christ, sin still dwells in me. It still affects me. And I think there's a there's a battle that constantly hinders us, that forbids us to come fully to what Jesus Christ is to us. And it deals uh, mainly on, and, and we, I'm going to read this, and I want you to understand what Paul is saying. He's saying all this stuff, but it really isn't, the idea of who he is. He says, yeah, well, when I want to do right, this guy wants to do bad. Well, that's true. But he isn't talking about him as an individual, but he's talking about the sin warring against the righteousness inside him, not not that what he physically going to do. I'm physically going to go do this, but Satan is there hindering me. Well, that is true, but through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we can overcome. There's a scripture I always, I always uh, tell people they misquote. He, say, he always says, Greater is he that is in me that's in the world. And they never quote the whole scripture because it says, uh, We are God. We, we are of God, little children, and have overcome them. them. Because greater is he that is in me that is in God. So so there is a reality and people say, well, greater is he is in me than, than he in the world. But it doesn't mean that. It means that we have already overcome that. The, the reality is it already happened. It's already been taken care of. We just have to walk in that glory that God has given us through what he, he apprehended that when and there's another whole concept here. Now, if I, I step on toes, don't, don't, don't feel bad about it. If you believe a certain way, then praise God you believe that way. But this is what I believe in, and this is what I'm going to throw out here. When Jesus died at Calvary, he went, it says he went into the pit. While the pit, he didn't go fight for the keys of life and death because he is life and death. So why, why would he have to fight for him? But he went, and he set the captives free. And people say, wow, he went to hell, and he set all these people free. That isn't what he's talking about. He went and set the captives free, and he took captivity captive. Understand what he's saying. He took captivity captive. And what is captivity? The captivity is what holds us. The, the sins we have that captivated us, it took us captive and it controls us. That's what he took captives in himself and took it to Calvary and the resurrection of who he was. So when Paul deals with that, he's dealing with an individual himself, but it isn't him per se that he's having a hard time going and, and committing his ministry to who he is and what he is, but he's fighting that that wars within his spirit. The spirit is always warring against the carnality of who we are. And you deal with that every day. And if you say you don't, then you're probably a liar. Because 
old man always wants to come back, always wants to do the wrong thing when, when we should be reading our Bible and studying the Word. We're off doing something else, chasing fables or whatever. But the reading the, the Word of God keeps us connected and the fullness, and we're, we're into that which He is, and we, we are connected fully in that. So let me, let me read this to you. It says, For we know the law is spiritual. Amen. Spiritual. But I am carnal, carnal, sold under sin. The carnality of this body was sold under sin toward Jesus Christ. That's what he took captive. Amen. For that which I do allow not, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then when it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. There is a reality of what he's talking about because we see that he knows that in his flesh there is no good thing. There is no good thing about this flesh because when we were out in the world, we did all the things that made us happy and we enjoyed them. We, we, we went to parties. We did this. Been there, done that. We did it for years. Every weekend when the weekend came, we, we went and we did our thing and we had fun doing it. Now we're trying to serve a higher power in who controls us in the spirituality of who we're supposed to be, and that's Jesus Christ. We want to change that, but old ways always want to look back. Carnality is always there knocking at the door. We, we see that. I, I speak of this often because we always say, well, we got that old man covered. We got control of him. And one late at night, you'll get out of bed to go to the bathroom and you'll stub your toe and the first things out of your mouth is uh, a language that you thought you left behind, but it jumps out there and you can't stop it because that is the old man. He's always in existence. He sits there and he waits on that moment to, to come out and hinder us. And then we, we got to turn and, and say, oh man, I really messed up that time. I, I did it big time. I, I cussed and... And then, but, brother and sister, we, we live under grace in the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ as he works in our lives. So we understand the fullness of what, what takes place. We, we can ask for forgiveness, but, but the idea is we can't just go and, and sin every day and come and, and go to confession like Catholics do and be forgiven just because you can say a few Hail Marys. It doesn't work that way. The forgiveness is the forgiveness in the heart and the mind of what God can do for you and just place that sin and put the goodness of who He is in you. And as a, if it starts to exist, and uh, John the Baptist said it the best, when, when Jesus came into His life, He said, now, now I have to decrease in who I am that He may increase in me. Excuse me, and when Jesus came and, and his ministry began to grow, you notice that the Bible, that uh, it don't hardly talk about John anymore. He, he kind of backed out of the way, and he began to doubt who he was. He began to doubt what he was and the reality of what he's supposed to be doing. And you remember he was in jail, and he sent his disciples to Jesus, and he said, go and ask him. Are you the one, or do we look for another? And the confusion of the reality of what we experience is like Paul. We have a conflict within ourselves. If God isn't working in our lives through Jesus Christ the way he's supposed to, we, we fall back into our old ways. I'm, I'm number one at that. I can stand under this mantle of the anointing of God and I can tell you exactly what it's supposed to be like, how we're supposed to be. But once I step out, I become that different person that I, I struggle sometimes with the reality to know that, that Jesus Christ is an on-time Lord, an on-time God. He never fails us, even though it's up to the minute second that He comes 
it's always on time. It's, he's never late. And Pastor Tony Peterson, he always sang that song. I love that song because we serve an on-time God. He's never late. Amen. We, we deal with that. But the reality, the carnal man, and we say we're saved. Well, I believe totally in Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, amen, I do too. But when things begin to crumble around you, the stability of who you are as you're trying to balance yourself on that last stone that's left to wait on the fullness of what Jesus Christ is supposed to do in your life, it becomes difficult and, and things start coming to your mind. Well, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I, should I take a hold of this or should I take a hold of that? And we never realize that it's time that comes into the fullness of who we are to take a hold of the one that means the most to us, the one that, that cares about us the most, and grab a hold of him into that life of who he is in Jesus Christ. So we, we deal with the, the, the supernatural into the carnality of who we are and what we, what we come from came from. So let me go on because it gets more interesting here. For I know that in me that that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for I, it will be present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not. It be, and that's just what I was talking about. It becomes difficult to hang on to that fullness of what of that righteousness of what God is. You remember when Paul said it is good for me to die and to be with Jesus. It's good for me. It's good for me. Into the reality of that. He said, but it wouldn't be good for you. But what would be good for you if I stayed here and continued my ministry? And that's what God allowed him to do is stay there and minister to the people. Because when you have a, a voice coming out of the wilderness, we speak of that voice. We we know them voices. We we we've traveled with them. I've been listening to Brother Jay Swallow's tapes, and he's he's passed away years ago. But but we still deal with the reality of what he speaks about. Now we we come into a whole new realm of of ministers that come forth. Pastor Buffalo, Pastor O Chief, and we we deal with the reality of of that word coming back and, and fulfilling what God is, 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 is spoken to do. We, we, we need to begin to build the fullness and that fortress that goes, goes around Jerusalem. It's time for Nehemiah, Nehemiah and Ezra to come and, and build, start building that wall to protect what is ours. And when we start building that wall, we start putting into that place of fortress where we can deal with the fullness of what Jesus Christ is to us. It's a shield. What We're having the shield of faith. It's movable and it quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy. But the reality, when we, we stumble into that place, we forget. We, I, there's a secular song I always, I always uh, kind of admire the, the lyrics that go. He says, we're all bound in chains and we never realize that we have the key to un, to take the lock off of them chains. And we, we never know that Jesus is right there. He can handle any situation that we have to the fullness of who he is. And when we start dealing with that, we see the reality of what God is. Let me go on here. For the good I would do not, but evil which I would, would not, that I do. Now, people say, well... He wanted to do good, but evil. He didn't end up doing evil. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the the carnality of who he is in his mind. That's what I was talking about when you're being on that last stone and you're trying to you're trying to comprehend what you're supposed to hang on to. But it's Jesus Christ, Amen. So now, if I do, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It's the sin that that controls and, and keeps us into the bound boundaries of, of reaching that totalness of Jesus Christ. It is who we are. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I love the law of God. The, in, the, the, the man within me, my spirit man, he deals with that. The, 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 the spirituality of who he is and the, the Holy Ghost will bring 
us to all truths if we allow him to do it. But we harness him. And we, we keep him at a distance because sometimes maybe we don't want to hear all the truth. Because the truth hurts sometimes and it deals with the righteousness of who we are, what we're supposed to be. Our brother, Pastor Dean Buffalo, called last week and he everybody knows that Dee's been having a rough time and we're we're trying to we trying to uh, make a transition into a different type of living and and getting ready and trying to retire and do all this and it's not easy it's not easy I don't know about anybody else but it's not easy for me to stop working and it, 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 it is something I'm not used to I've worked all my life so there's a transition but let me go back. Pastor Dean called and and we he, we talked. He prayed. He prayed for us and he began to prophesy that. And he prophesied over Chronicles twenty eight, I believe it is. And but so I went and I read it when he was done that the blessings would be poured out. You know, if you follow the commandments of God, this I will do. If you follow my ways, this I will do. If you continue in my road and give these things up, this I will do for you. Your enemies cannot come and gather around you. This I will do if you walk according to my commandments. If you, if you deal with the righteousness of who I am, this I will do for you. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. I'm sorry. I've been corrected. And so if you go and read that, read the good part. But, but let me tell you, when he's done with the good part, God will tell you what he, he will do to you if you don't do what he wants you to do in the commandments that he lays out for us. It becomes a very difficult thing because everything gets reversed on who we are. So um, it is a difficult thing to rely on Jesus Christ. I guess that's what I'm saying. And Paul's having a hard time dealing with that <clears throat> that flesh that always there. The flesh is always there. The flesh always wants to to drink pop and not drink orange juice, and he wants to do do eat a lot of pork and not salad. And I hope you get the picture. But the reality of what he is 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 what we we want to be you are you are what you eat that's what everybody says you are what you eat and if you eat the word of god and and put it into your system and and you will have life life and have life more abundantly don't mean you're going to be rich he's going to mean you're rich in the spirituality of what he's given you amen let's go on i find in the law that when i do do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God that is after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. Captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. You can never get rid of that. You're striving. I'm sure we're perfect in Jesus Christ. We are definitely perfect in Him. But you are not perfect in this world. You are striving to be perfect. That's why people people look at you and they see you somewhere and you're not doing your binds this or you're in the wrong place where you're not supposed to be. Well, they know how you're supposed to be, but they don't want to give their hearts to the Lord and show you how it's supposed to be done. But they can tell you how to live your life. Let me tell you, it's been that way ever since we've been Christians because people always tell us, or have told us how we're supposed to be, what's D supposed to be doing. When we pastor the church, I was supposed to do this, D was supposed to do this, this is the way it's supposed to be. But that isn't the way God gave it to us. He gave it to us for the reality of who He is as He works in our lives. So Paul deals with that. But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin. That's that's the captivity that holds us and binds us to that. And he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, when the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but the flesh 
the law of sin. The law of sin is always going to be there to to comprehend, help us, and and put us into that place of the reality of what we're supposed to be. So, Amen. I hope you got a little bit out of this that you may you may strive to be what God has called you to be. Because in the last days, we are striving in the end times to be all that God. And this is what I've been preaching for the last three years. To be what God expects us to be. Not who we think we are supposed to be in Christ, but who God wants us to be and who He is. And when He lays it out there, sometimes it's very difficult for us to take and comprehend that which He has given us and to live by that. To live by the righteousness of who he is. Sometimes it's better to be slack in who we are and what we want to do. And the laziness of our body. Instead of being that person that he expects us to be. Walk in the fullness of, of his. Well, let me finish with this. Years ago. Um, we were. Ha I was having a rough time. I guess we both were. D and I both. But it just seemed like our backs were against the wall. And we were in a rock and a hard place as I say. And uh, we were dealing with a lot of, lot of things in ministry and the body and people coming against us and trying to, we were trying to do the right thing. And, but people were telling us otherwise and blah, blah, blah. A lot of people's been there. But I was coming home from work one night and I, I, I grabbed this old piece of paper on my load sheets or something and, and God began to talk to my mind or my heart and the song came out and the song is in the still of the night I heard a voice called down from heaven that said I forgot to that said arise and be strong oh and that voice said to me arise and be strong and walk in the footsteps that I laid out before you and I wrote that down, and I, I wrote a whole song, uh, and, uh, but the reality is that uh, my mind went back to Moses and Job and Joshua. These are all the ones that were on their face crying, and, and Jesus, I mean, God told Moses to get up off of your face, and he told Job to get up and be a man. And he told Joshua to get up and be encouraged. Be encouraged. Get up off of your face. And so what I learned is that God has already set that standard for me. He's already accomplished that. He said, what I do, you will do greater. What I, the, the walk I walk, I have laid it out that you walk this walk. And it says, through much tribulation did he enter into the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation do we enter into the kingdom of God. So be encouraged to, to, to follow after what God is. I know that Paul really dishes it out to us that the old man is always going to be there. And I fight against him a lot. And let me tell you, it's a difficult thing that old man wants to always come back and hinder who we are. And so we have to strive in, in who he is and, and what we, we want to commit to God or do we want to let him win that battle. Because he's, he's trying to take your mind into captivity. If he can control your mind, he controls you. But if our heart and mind is set upon Jesus Christ, then where can we go wrong? If, if God be for us, who can be against us? If, if we... Greater is he that is in you than, than he that is in the world. And remember, read the first part of that scripture. You are of God, little children, and have overcome. Because, because, greater is he that is in you. So, amen. I'll finish with that. And Lord bless you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll be praying for everybody as you pray for us. Amen. Lord bless. Amen.